Hello there, my name is Prompt Muse and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Comfy UI. Not only that, I'm going to be going through and making sure you understand what the heck you are doing and what is going on. Comfy UI is just another user interface to be able to access and control stable diffusion, much like Automatic 11.11. With Comfy UI being a node-based layout, this allows for complete control of your workspace, which means you will only be using what you need to use for your AI generation, which in turn means that you're going to be using less GPU, which hopefully would make your image generations a lot quicker to produce. Another neat thing about Comfy UI, you can literally drag and drop an image of a workflow into your Comfy UI and it will load up the actual node base workspace. You also can do that with image generations. You can simply take an image that was created in Comfy UI and drag that into your Comfy UI system and it loads all the nodes that were used to create that image. That is chef's kiss. So this makes it far more easier to share workflows and as the community grows you will see a lot of workflows on Discord and Reddit, links in the description there as well, which will get you up and started and I'll show you some resources where to grab them from as we go along in this tutorial. In this Comfy UI tutorial you're going to be learning how to set up a basic workflow and then edit and customize that workflow, add Laura's to that workflow and then do text to video animations and then finally video to video animations. The goal of this video is to get you confident and comfortable with Comfy UI. If you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe, like the notification bell and hit the like button. So first thing, we're going to go through system requirements to make sure you have a PC capable of running Comfy UI. Now, if you don't, do not worry. I'm going to go through what I actually use because I don't have a PC that is capable of running Comfy UI. So first off, you can run this on AMD cards as well as Macs. See description below if you have those. Preferably, you would have 12 gigabytes of VRAM because remember, we're not just doing static images here. We are processing videos. Also, you'd want about 50 to 80 gigabytes of storage free because we are creating quite large outputs. We are scaling images as well as using large models and all this takes a lot of space. I don't have any of those things on my PC and what I use is a system called Shadow Tech and Shadow Tech actually allows you to log in to a computer that is far away somewhere, I don't know, and use that system. And I think I'm using an NVIDIA 1080 and I've got over one terabyte of storage. I'm using a 12 gigabyte VRAM. I think it comes to about $40 a month. You can actually upgrade if you want to, but that's what I'm using on this tutorial. You just log in and you go to your designated computer, which is the same computer every time. So you can install all sorts of stuff. You don't have to reinstall all the time. You're logging into your own personal PC. From there, you can install whatever you want. There's no limits on time or the amount. You can add additional storage at any point if you want. This is not sponsored at all, and I can say whatever I want about Shadow Tech, but to be honest, they are a great company and I've had no problems. You just got to make sure you have good Wi-Fi and it's not interrupted. Otherwise, you will lose connection to your computer. So with all that said, let's get into installing Comfy UI. So there's two programs that you need to have to run Comfy UI. And the first one is Git. And this just allows you to pull extensions down from GitHub. If you go to the Git link in the description below and just install the Windows version for that, you probably already have that if you've been running Automatic 11.11. The second is FFmpeg. This will essentially encode videos and allow you to make videos from your AI generations. So if you're just doing images, you might not need that. I have made a dedicated video on how to install FFmpeg in the link below as well, which is very quick and easy to do. So now finally, we are going to get into installing the Comfy UI build. So if you head down into the description below and go to the GitHub page, which is the Comfy Anonymous Comfy UI page, and when you're on that page, so you scroll down until we see the heading installing. So under the Windows heading, you can see this button called Direct Link to Download. We are downloading the standalone portable version, which in my mind is the easiest installation for Comfy UI. So click on the hyperlink that says Direct Link to Download, which is here. Give that a click and that will download the zip file. So once your file has downloaded, go over to your downloads folder, right click on the file, and you might notice I'm using WinRAR. In all the documentation, it says to use some zip, but 
it works with Vimoire, so <laughs> I'm going to use that and then click on extract files. Now I'm going to look down this list here and select my D drive. Usually I would install programs like this to my C drive, but in this case, I actually have it already installed on my C drive. So I'm going to now install it onto my D drive and just make sure your destination path is your C drive or whatever you're downloading it to and then click OK. Now it's going to be extracting all the Comfy UI files onto my D drive. So let's head over to the D drive over here and check it out. So here we go. This is the file structure for Comfy UI. So if you go in, you can see it's pretty similar to automatic 11.11. .11 we need to download a checkpoint model and I've gone over to Civit AI. The Cardos Anime Checkpoint comes recommended by Kasinkadink, the author of Animate Diff Evolve. However, you can download any model you like, just make sure it's Stable Diffusion 1.5 base model. So if we go in and download this checkpoint, once the checkpoint's downloaded, just cut and go to your drive where your Comfy UI is. Go to Comfy UI Models and then you've got a folder called checkpoints and just put your checkpoints in there if you come back down to the VAE and we're going to be using for version 2 and this is a good all-rounder this is being downloaded from the stability AI's hugging face website so go to the download button and right click save link as and then I'm just going to navigate to my D drive where my comfy UI is click on comfy UI models and then down here you'll find VAE and just save it in there. So we're now going to go ahead and install Comfy UI Manager. It's a really simple user interface within Comfy UI that allows you to install extensions and nodes, similar to the extension manager in Automatic 11.11. .11. This just means that you don't have to go to random GitHub pages to download everything. Everything is indexed really nicely in this manager. So if we come to the Civit AI page, we can download the Comfy UI Manager. And again, the link is in the description below and we just click on this download button and download it. So once it's downloaded, head over to your downloads folder and you've got your Comfy UI Manager underscore V0222. Right click on that and again, I'm still using WinWell, whatever you've got, WinZip or whatever you're going to be using to extract. And I'm going to click on extract files. I'm going to go to this PC and choose my D drive because that's where I've saved my Comfy UI Windows portable folder to and I'm just going to select the entire folder and click OK. Now that's extracted to my D drive, so I'm going to head over to my D drive and we're extracted to and that has extracted this install manager for portable version batch file here. So just double left click it and it will run the script to install that. Finally, my friends, we are ready to dive into Comfy UI. So I'm just going to go into the Comfy UI folder. These two files here are what you're going to double left click to run Comfy UI. So whenever you start it up, this is where you're going to come to and click. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, click the run NVIDIA GPU. So we're going to double click the run NVIDIA GPU and you can see here we get this little startup screen. If you have any errors, it usually shows you in this script here. So it's important to just keep an eye on this script. As you can see here, this is running on your browser and down here on the right hand corner is our Comfy UI installation manager. This is going to make it really easy to update Comfy UI and install add-ons, etc. without having to do git pull requests and things like that. These are our nodes. Now please, please, you might feel a bit intimidated at first, but it is super simple. And I go through every single node so you know exactly what they are doing. So this is a bit like a circuit board, so you can see each processing working at once. Whereas automatic 11.11 was like, check this box, tick this, do this, and then run. And you can't see how it's working and there are all additional settings all compiled into one UI. Whereas this is a WYSIWYG. So the first node we're gonna look at is the first node in the workflow, which is load checkpoints. So this is going to load your checkpoints in, and this is pulling from your checkpoint folder in the folder structure. And I'm using Cardus Anime, which we installed earlier. And then that runs into your positive prompt. Okay, so your positive prompt is in here. So this is where you're going to write your prompt. And then we've got the negative prompt, which is this one down here. Okay, and this then runs into the K sampler. If you're used to using automatic 11.11 or any other image generation UIs, you'll be familiar with terms such as C setting, steps, CFG, sampler, names, scheduled to noise. If not, I do have a glossary on my website down below where you can learn what 
each of these things are so you can have more control over your image generation. So this is the latent image node and this is just your width from height and batch size so how many images are you creating and all this then feeds into the VAE decode which we spoke about earlier. Okay so let's run this workflow and see what happens. I'm actually just going to change the checkpoint over here just by clicking it and changing it from the drop down menu and then I'm going to click on Q prompt which will run our image generation. So you can see the green outline there shows you whereabouts it is in the processor. So it's going to spend the most time in the K sample, especially when you're making videos. So if we come over where it says save image, you can see it's created us the beautiful scenery nature glass bottle landscape as requested in our prompt. So this image here is saved automatically in your output folder. So if we just go there and have a look, so we go to Comfy UI and then in output, and you'll see all your output images in here. Now, a neat trick is that all these images were created in Comfy UI, and you can then take any of these images like so, and just drag and drop that into Comfy UI, and it loads up the node layout or workflow. So you can see here now it's loaded up with that images prompts and all the seed settings and everything I set for that, the width and the height. So it essentially embeds all the information in the image, which is really handy. So if I click on Q prompt now, that will generate that image that we just had in our output folder again, like so, so you can go in and tweak that. So this is as simple as the node layout gets. I'm gonna go ahead and install animate diff. We're also gonna install control nets as well as motion models. And we're gonna do this all through the Comfy UI manager and it makes it so much easier so we don't have to go to various GitHub pages. It's all centralized now within Comfy UI. So I want you to click on manager here and then click on install custom nodes. The first thing we're going to install is animate diff evolve by Kasinkadink. So if you go to the top right of this dialog where it says search and type in Kasinkadink. In the description you can just copy his name from there and paste it in and then search for Kusinkadinkt and then you see the author Kusinkadink and we want these three items here. We want Comfy UI Advanced Control Net, we want Animate Diff Evolve and Comfy UI Video Helper Suite. So we're just going to check each one of these and we're going to click on install and that will install all three at once. Okay, once that has installed, you'll get a little message down here in red saying to restart. We've got a couple of models we want to install before we restart. Now you'll notice in red here, it talks about motion models, which we'll get to in a minute. But while we're here, we just want to type into the search box BizNose. And that's another node that we want to install in order to run batch scheduling. So we're just going to click on install. Okay, once that's done now, we're going to go back and install those motion models that Kazinkadink suggested. So we're going to go to close and go to install models and in the search box we're going to type in MM and uh, that just stands for motion model. So we want the motion model version 14, 15 and version 15 underscore 2. These high and mid ones are good ones as well so I would download all of these. So these might take a bit of time because they are quite big files so give it a second to download. Okay, so once that has finished, you'll get the red message at the bottom. So we're still in the model section of the Comfy UI Manager. And what we're going to now install is our control net. So you don't need to go to the GitHub page anymore. You can install everything directly from here. So I'm going to just type in control net. Control net that we want is Stable Diffusion 1.5. So we're going to have to come down further down the list here. So let's have a look. We want Line Art. So I'm going to click on Install. We also want to install Open Pose. You can install as many control nets as you have space for. So just check that you've got enough storage. Once it's done, and I've got the red message at the bottom. I'm going to close everything down. So I'm going to close the manager and close my UI. And then I'm also going to close this batch file down. That's very important because you can't have two instances of this running. 
So I'm going to jump back into my Comfy UI and just run a Comfy UI once again. You can see here in this window, it's now installing everything that we requested. So it's just get pulling all those nodes and extensions down and installing it onto our computer. So on another tab on my browser, I've opened up Kazinkadink's GitHub page. Uh, this is the author of Animate Evolve, and he's actually got some really nice pre-made templates to get you started with Animate Evolve. And if you come down to where it says text to image here we go got a workflow here which will produce this animation at the bottom so if I just take this off the browser here and move it over I can literally drag and drop that into my Comfy UI and it loads up that node layout and that's a pretty cool feature of Comfy UI you can take an image of a workflow and literally drag it and drop if you dragged a workflow in and you've got this message and missing nodes which are showing as bright red boxes do not panic it's really easy just go to your manager and click on install missing nodes and all the missing nodes will be there just check ones and install them remember once you've installed them you need to close down your Comfy UI browser and your batch file and then restart again and those will install so that that's a super easy fix for that problem if you get the red boxes. Okay, so we just run this by clicking Q prompt and we see that we should get an identical image or animation to what Kasinkadink had on his website. As you can see, we've got exactly the same animation that, that Kasinkadink had on his website because we didn't change any of the settings. But I'm gonna go through the new nodes that we now have in our layout so you understand what they do. So we went through load checkpoint and then we've got our clip setting, which you can change depending on what model you're using and what kind of style of animation you're trying to create. Then we've got our positive point here and then our negative prompt. And as before, it goes into the K sampler. And then we have our width and height of our AI generation, which 512 by 512 will give you the best looking result. Uh, you obviously can change that to 512 by 768 or whatever you want to do and upscale it. The batch size is the amount of frames you are using. So this is 16. And again, that gives the best result as it is at the moment. However, you can increase that amount, uh, but not in this workflow. I'm going to show you a third workflow where we will be increasing the amount of frames we've got. So up here, we've got the animate diff loader. So this is loading in that motion model. So that's what's creating that movement, that subtle movement in the animation and just helping with the overall fluidity of that animation. But you should kind of now be getting the gist of the node layout and hopefully feeling a little bit more comfortable with everything here. We're now going to start making some changes and then introduce a Laura. This is the same workflow we had a second ago, but I've just changed a couple of things to make it more bespoke. So I've just changed the checkpoint. I've added Tune U, which you can download from Civit AI. And then I've changed the positive prompt as well, as well as the negative prompt. I've upped the steps to 30 to hopefully increase the quality. And the sampler is DDPM and scheduler Carraris. And if we go up here, I've now switched the version model to 15 version two and my width and height I have increased as well. We need to add another node so we can increase the length of our animations. So to add nodes, all you simply do is double left click and we're going to be using something called the animate diff uniform context options. Just click on that. We're just going to pop this guy over here or over there, go on, <laughs> uh, pop him over here. And then we're going to take the content options and connect him to the content options in the animate diff loader. And now what that means is when we increase that batch size, we won't have any errors whatsoever. So let's run this prompt and see what happens. And this is what has happened. We got a pretty picture. Now we now want to add a Laura to this workflow. And then we're going to move on to video to video, which is my favorite, to be honest. So to add a Laura, you just double left in any empty space and in the search bar, just type Laura. And we're going to use the Laura loader here. So I've already preloaded in some Laura files. You can just go to Civit AI and grab any Laura you like and then save it in the models, Laura, and then save it in that folder there. I'm going to go with more details, which should add more details to our final output. And the model on the left hand side, I'm going to click that and connect that to the model in the load checkpoint. The clip, I'm going to then connect that to the clip in the load checkpoint. 
just come over here slightly so you can see. And then the model on the right hand side, I'm going to connect that to the animate diff loader there. And then the clip, I'm going to load that into the clip setting here. So you can see the load checkpoint runs into the load Laura and then that runs into the rest of the node layout. So the strength model is set at one, which is currently a bit high. Now this could create artifacts in our output. So I'm going to just reduce that to 0 0.5. It's completely up to you and it probably needs to be played around with a couple of times and creating generations to test this out. So I'm ready to press this prompt and see how much that changes the overall output and hopefully adds more detail to it. And that is our final image with the Laura added on. Now the more detail Laura I believe gives way more detail to the animation and it looks really nice. Something I just want to say which I didn't say earlier you don't actually need to add the Laura triggers to your prompt anymore. Now I hopefully got you comfortable with comfy UI and you're feeling a little bit more confident but if you're not and you're having error after error please go down to the description of this comments page and I have pinned an FAQ where you can write your problems and hopefully I can resolve them hopefully. This is a video to video workflow using one control net and one LoRa. The original version of this workflow came from Inner Reflections. You can go over to Civit AI and download any of his workflows here. So we're going to be using Inner Reflections guide as a template. So if you come to number one attachment, which is basic video to video with one control net, this is always good to start off with. If you download that, once it's downloaded, come to your comfy UI, go to load and just load in that JSON file like so. We're going to go through each one of these nodes and I'm going to tell you what they're going to do. And we're going to adjust a couple of things here. So first we're going to go over to load images. You'd use the images input if you were using frames as an input, but I'm actually using an MP4 video. So I need to change this to a video node. So you want to delete that and in any empty space, just double left click. And we're going to add a video load node. So just type in video. This is the node you're going to use to load up your input video. If you don't have that node when you search, remember you can download it from the manager if you're missing anything. I'm just going to attach the image to the image. So we're flowing back into our workflow. So there's a couple of things you might want to change here before we move on. So we've got the frame load cap. So that limits how many frames it's going to render of your animation. So let's say you've got a 700 framed animation. You can cap it to 500 frames. So it's not rendering the entire thing. So we come down to skip first frames. So I've set mine to 60. So it's going to skip the first 60 frames. And then we come down to select every nth frame. So this is set as one and means it's going to render every single frame in the animation or input video. Now, if you were to set it at 20 or 50 or something like that, that's great to preview an animation before you do the final render. Just go to choose file and upload the video input you want to use. So next we go to the upscale image node. Now you don't have to upscale this image whatsoever. And for your first test render, I would leave it as the resolution that the input file is. However, I'm going to show you how to increase anyway. You just come to this width node here and increase the width in proportion to what your input video was anyway. And then same with the height. If you don't want to upscale, which I'm not going to do here, just set your width and height value to the same as your input video and it will remain the same. If you go to load checkpoint here, you can select the checkpoint that you want to use. I'm going to use art U here. And then you've got the VAE, which is automatically loaded in. And then we come over to the middle animate diff nodes. So this is where your motion model is going to be loaded in. I've selected the motion model stable diffusion version 15 version two. You can select whatever motion model you prefer. I've left a list below in the description so you can find one that suits your project. Okay, so we come over to the case sampler. Is it on 25 steps? I'm gonna leave that the same. CFG is seven, which is a good medium. Remember, the lower your CFG, the more you're allowing AI to be creative and take control, the higher the CFG, the more it's gonna be listening to your prompt and what you want it to do. So the sample I'm going to stick to the same uh, that he has here and same with schedule and denoise I'm going to keep the same as well. We're not really going to do much changes to that. The seed as well, you can change the seed here if you wish. 
And then we've got the prompt. So we've got the positive prompt here and the negative prompt. So we're going to just adjust this. So we've just put a prompt in there. It's very, very basic because we're just testing this out. And then we're going to come up here. And then last but not least, we've got our control net here. So this is loading in the line uh, art here. And then this will produce the images here from the control net, which will be, if I'm using line art, lines to show you what it is following. Okay, so you've got your strength as well. We don't need to change any of this. Just leave it as is for your first test run. And we are ready to run our workflow. And that's it. Once you get down to the bones of it, it's actually very simple. So before we run this, actually, I want to change this. It says animate div combined and it says depreciated. That means it's an old node and we need to update it. So I'm just going to delete that node there. And I'm going to double left click on an empty space there to load up the node search. I'm going to type in VHS and I'm going to select the video combine. So this is the most up to a date. Well, according to the time and date of this video that we're going to use. So we're just going to attach the image to the images there. And this is where our output will be. So I'm going to switch over to MP4 as well. So hopefully it will be a better quality. And then all there is to do now is hit Q prompt. So it's been about 10 minutes and this is what our final output looks like. We've definitely got the ears that we prompted in. By changing a few parameters, the seed, the checkpoint, the prompt, you can get a whole different animation. Isn't this cool? Another fantastic template for you to try out is the prompt scheduling, which allows you to change your prompt over time and create things like this. And with all that said, thank you so much. A written version of this tutorial can be found as always on the Prompt Muse website and on my socials. I am at Prompt Muse on pretty much everything. Thank you and that will do it.